From year to year to week to week, even hour to hour, fish patterns can change at a moment's notice. As the angler, it's up to you to make the proper adjustments and dial in on exactly what it is that the fish are doing. On this episode of the Fisherman's Handbook, we take a look at two different outings on the same body of water during the early spring, each within a week of the other, and break down how the fish have moved and changed over that time. There's one. Fish on. All oh, in the way. <laughs> Not very big, but he's a bite. It's a bite. That is a good pretty good one. on the north wind. Yeah, probably a male sitting up there, guarding a bed. Not gonna complain about a bite. No, 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 no. Don't complain about a bite. You can get one on a day like today. Oh, that speed worm won't work in this shell. Well, that's kind of what I thought, but maybe I out thought him. You may, there's another one. Another one. I better change up. Huh? <laughs> Maybe you better throw a spinnerbait. Maybe better throw a spinnerbait. <laughs> Maybe I did outthink them. Yeah. Get in there. Boy, they're healthy looking when they're not. Oh, like they are nice like and that. fat. Oh, yeah. And, Clean. you know, the average size is two to three pounds. You're not going to catch a bunch of four and five pounders, but, uh, you know, I've caught an eight, some sixes, fives, yeah. you know, it's, not bad. It's a lot of fun to get bites like them. They're so healthy, they pull so hard. One tried and true method to catching fish during the late pre-spawn stages is working a spinner bait through heavy cover. Being faced with cloudy skies, heavy winds, and abundant cover, host Wade Middleton and guest Mike Hawks have opted to start the day by working spinner baits through the fertile waters of Choke Canyon Reservoir. You know, old spinnerbait, my gosh, they've been around forever. You've got a mix of blades, mix of color combinations, and different weights when you can throw them. I mean, it's a standard in anybody's tackle box. You're always going to want to have some have spinnerbaits in your box. Got him, got him, got him. Got him. There's a better one. Oh, that's a chunky yeah. one. Like I said, they're just so mean out here right now. And they're new, and they're young, and they're healthy. If you'll notice when we're fishing a spinnerbait, we're imparting a lot of action uh, on that bait by twitching that rod, by pausing that reel, by bumping it, by shaking it. You're causing that skirt to pulse. You're causing those blades to kick and react in different uh, different areas. And sometimes it can be as simple as a pause. Sometimes it can be as simple as, as speeding it up to get a reaction strike. There he is. You're throwing a bigger spinner. There's one. There's one. Right there. <laughs> well, you kind of get on the wad of them sometimes. Yeah. Looky there. See, they're all about this size. This yeah. is all the same. Just let us drift up in there. I want to fish that tree, too. Uh, just neat to see the, the body size and style of these fish yeah. right they're, now. They're, they're real blocky yeah. all the way back to, the, to the, where the tail starts, you know? I mean, they're, they're not those long, skinny no. rails like you yeah. see in a lot of These are younger fish. These are younger. These, these are, are younger very fish. young fish. Yeah, these, these fish here can so. be four to five pounds here yeah. in the next couple of years. Yes, easy. and they will be, too. They'll yeah. grow. In yeah. two years, they'll be four pounders. Yeah. And those are probably a year and a half old or yeah. so, you know, they're young and dumb. That's what I like about them. I like the dumb part. I like the dumb part. Mike and Wade are proving to be smarter than the fish thus far, as they've managed to stay one step ahead. Keep it tuned here to see if the pair can continue this trend as conditions change throughout the day. We know if you found one crappie, you may have found a thousand. We know the joy of getting your boots back in the mud. We know the journey can be more rewarding than the destination. We know the great outdoors. We love the great outdoors. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Stop by today for huge savings on the gear you need and the brand you trust. Plus free two day shipping at BassPro.com and Cabela's.com. Groundbreaking designs unsurpassed quality, and unshakable confidence. Welcome to the Ranger Z500 and Z100 series. Leading the industry for over 50 years, these rigs are custom crafted and loaded with more features and advantages to deliver the ultimate ownership experience. The legendary Ranger Z series, unleash next level performance.
Mercury, go boldly. The Fisherman's Handbook is brought to you in part by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Garmin, fight your fish, not your fish finder. Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. So in the morning, you know, gosh, you get here and the wind's blowing 10, 15, and it's, it's blowing in on some banks and some hard spots, and you would think you want to throw a moving bait. So that's what we started with, just, you know, winding spinner baits and, and bladed swim jigs. Get out of way here. As you go through the entire day, the weather totally changed. You know, it was windy and cold and very cloudy when we started, and then the sun had begun to come out, temperatures had warmed up, and there was no wind, so our presentations went from winding and twitching baits and, and really fishing very aggressively and fast to slowing down, almost weightless, too weightless, and letting a bait sit there. Oh, there he is. Where you letting it sit? Yeah, let it sit that time. <laughs> Just like we were talking about. Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> I'll let him sit a little more. Yeah, than, than I think we'll start letting him sit a lot more. A little more. <laughs> and get it in the hole, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I was just sitting there thinking, before you mentioned it, then I was sitting there thinking it. I'm overfishing it. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's how we it overfish goes. everything. Ah, uh, yeah, we overthink too. Overthink and overfish. <laughs> that's exactly right. Now the wind's quit, and I want the wind to blow so I can throw something moving. It's almost like right now, if you get it in front of one, just making a simple basic decision of, of not doing the wrong thing, you're gonna catch it. Probably. You know. Yep. You know, throw a spinner bait when it's out there in that windy country. Yep. Throw the swim jig when you're... When it's a little flatter. And a little flatter. Then you get back here in this. A little swim bait. A little, a little swim bait, bait. fluke. You just gotta match the conditions to what you're doing, you know? Presentation's always different. Always different. We're certain. Just because you caught them yesterday, man, you look at those tournament standings and you watch those guys at the top the first day. Yes. You know, we've all been there. Next day, bagel. Being able to understand fish movements, I think, is another big key. And God, there's so many resources in today's world, you know, from streaming videos online to the print magazines to the fishing shows to understand how people dissect what fish movements are. And, and by that, I mean in the springtime, they're coming out of their wintertime haunts. As the water warms up, they want to go shallow to make babies and spawn. And then as the weather changes on a daily and sometimes hourly basis, they may move back up five feet. They can come back and forth several times in that entire spawning process and you just got to kind of dissect it by that day what's going on and hopefully you can intersect the fish. Fish. Yeah. A little better one there. Yeah, he's little, he was on that tree right oh, there. Yeah, the single tree. Oh yeah. yeah. Good one, Mike. Get out of the way. Let's see. Heck yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. About time, huh? You know, when it gets slick like this, you got to resort to this, you know, something dead stick to get them to bite you. They won't hit the moving bait anymore, you know. Now, sometimes when it's real, real warm, if it was on a warming trend, you could probably still catch some on something moving, like a frog or a skinny dipper or something, but not with the front we had come in. <laughs> Go back and tell your friends, buddy. Doing what we did, when we did it, was just based on years of experience, you know. You can't go throw a spinnerbait on that lake right now and expect to do very good. I mean, you, just, you can look out there and see how it's just slick and there's bright sunshine and you just, they're gonna spook from you. And the fish were very spooky. We had to make long casts when it got slick like that to get a bite. Basically, it's just years of experience and just intuition. You don't even think about it. You just do it. You know, when, you, when you're fishing along with a spinnerbait and it's got a good ripple on the water and then you go around a point and it's not quite so much ripple, you pick up a swim jig and you throw that a little while. We caught some on that today. And then when it gets really calm, you pick up a skinny dipper, you know, or a fluke, or a Cinco type bait, and you use that. I mean, just, you gotta take what the lake gives you. Good day of fishing down here, sir. It's good to see this lake come back. Stetson Blaylock! Let's go!
Garmin Live Scope. I tell you right now, if you don't have it, you are behind. It's just wild. It's like a video game. If you do not have that Garmin Live Scope, you are definitely missing out. Bassmaster Classic Champion! Your time on the water is precious. You return season after season to make unforgettable memories. Fight a few fish, reconnect with friends, and recenter yourself. If you count on having this time, you need an outboard you can count on to power it. That's why boaters stay with Yamaha for the long run, for life. They know reliability starts here. From sun up to sun down, day in and day out, we work hard. We play hard. And to keep us going during those long hours, we demand performance. Angle Coolers, the original high performance cooler. The Fisherman's Handbook is brought to you in part by Yamaha Marine. Reliability starts here. Engel, the original high performance cooler. Sunline America, the strength to guarantee your confidence. And by PowerPole, total boat control. You can look at the weather and kind of predict certain days that are going to be good. You can, you can see those warming trends and those nights that are stay warm. Right before the cold front hits, what do the fish do? Well, they're typically going to be moving, and the thing about it is, they should bite, and that's what we're looking for. Earlier in today's show, we watched as Wade and guest Mike Hawks fished Choke Canyon during the late pre-spawn stage. Cloudy skies and wind gave way to pristine, picture-perfect weather conditions, causing the bass to change patterns multiple times throughout the day. Now, Wade is returning back to Choke Canyon Reservoir, this time with professional angler Clark Wendlet. Temperatures are warming ahead of a fast approaching front, and the two are hopeful that the fish will be pushed up shallow and willing to bite. So if you just go down the shoreline on the inside edge of the grass, you know, a lot of times the inside edge of the grass is what you're looking for in a grass lake because that's where they set up, that's where they want to spawn. But a lot of the time here, you can't get to that inside edge. No, I mean, you know, you gotta find those holes. I mean, you can find holes, I think, around the hardwoods or just maybe there's a few rocks on a certain point, but when you can get there, it seems to be when we've been getting by. Yeah, oh yes, sir. Going by me, but <laughs> he was. He's trying to win the Daytona 500. He was. Little jerk shed. That's what makes him strong. I mean, he's just thick all the way to the back. Like that. Go back. To me. I'm always trying to figure out where the fish want to go. I mean, and that's the coolest part of, of fishing. It's like, where are they and how, how am I going to get a bite? And every day is so uniquely different. I was actually down here uh, three days ago and the water temperature was 56 degrees and it was a north wind and a high bluebird day. But when you look at the weather in the springtime and you can see an extended warming trend, especially with warm nights, uh, it, gets, it gets you excited if you fish a lot because you know the fish are coming. You know they're going to set up in places where hopefully you can catch them. They're going to flood the banks, if, in other words. I can do this all day long. I never get tired of it. <laughs> oh. Not a big one, Kevin, but I caught him. That's cool. Had one come out from under the bush and try to eat at that one. Finding fish in a situation like this, um, you know, un obviously understanding the seasonal movements, where the fish are going to go is, is really key, where they want to spawn. We're, we know we're around areas where these fish want to spawn. So my theory on what happens this time of year is, is fish are moving out of deep water, out of drains, out of the middle of the lake, wherever they spend their time in the winter feeding. 
to ditches, guts, and then uh, on the flats. And they spend their time spawning on flats. So what, what's gonna happen out here in all this grass is, is they're gonna spawn in holes. They're not gonna spawn in this solid grass, but they're feeding in top of this grass. Good one. That's a nice one. Man. Do I need to go get him? I don't know. <laughs> Come on. That didn't take long. Oh, ah, get over there. <laughs> That was fun. Throwing a little swim bait, Strike King Raid Swimmer. That's a nice fish, two and a half pounder. You know, Wade made the comment earlier, it's like a redfish when you bite. You know, when you catch a redfish, that fish is just gone. I mean, as fast as he can. These fish are the same way. My thought on it is, is that when you set the hook, there's not very much distance between the grass and the top of the water. And when they are in really shallow water, a lot of times, they just fly by you. Instead of going down and digging, they fly by you. It's so fast, we can't even keep up with them. There's Wade's got one right there. Good one, too. <laughs> oh, he went flying by. <laughs> I'm just going to be his voiceover guy from this point on. I'm just, I'm just voicing over, I mean, basically giving commentary as he catches bass. It doesn't seem really all that fair, but that's a nice thing. Hey, when they're biting, you better take advantage of it. Take advantage of, of it. That's right. buddy. <laughs> I mean, to interrupt your interview, but that's a pretty good bite. <laughs> bet it was. <laughs> fishing line is a key component to take into consideration when planning for a fishing adventure. Both the pound test and type of line will greatly affect the action of a bait, as well as your hookup and landing ratios. Keep it tuned here to learn more. You know that guy that's always bringing in big ones from offshore? He's got secret lures. That guy that can pull out his spinning rod and start catching them when you can't buy a bite. He's got secret lures. What about that guy that can follow you down the bank and catch what you left behind? He's got secret lures. Oh, you good one. If you're ready to be that guy, get your secret lures today at secretlures.com. You've been waiting all week for this. And Sunline wants to make sure you're ready for it with bulk spools of all your favorite fishing lines. That's so fun. Bulk up with Sunline. The Fisherman's Handbook is brought to you in part by Spro Sports Professionals. TH Marine, from transom to trolling motor. And by Big Bite Baits, designed to bring the big bite to your line. Welcome back to this episode of the Fisherman's Handbook. The topic of today's show is focusing on the changing patterns of fish during the early spring months. Just last week, Wade and Mike were setting the hook on dozens of fish using a spinner bait. And now, Wade and Clark are finding similar success, but this time, the offering of choice is a swim bait. You know, a spinner bait, gosh, I grew up watching Jimmy Houston throw spinner baits, you know, every Saturday. He'd be on TV throwing a spinner bait in the bushes, in the trees. It was the coolest bite ever. But as as fishing has evolved, it's, you know, I don't know if fish have gotten smarter. You can obviously still catch a lot of fish on a, sp on a spinner bait, but I think that a swim bait and a spinner bait are very similar in a, in a lot of ways. You know, we're fishing a swim bait. Wade's throwing a big bite swim bait. I'm throwing a Strike King Raid swimmer. Mine's four and three quarter inches, and basically you just reel it really slow. The bite is incredible. What your tendency is, is to jerk too quick. You basically want to make sure it loads up, and it also depends on your line. I'm using braid. Braid has absolutely no stretch. Fluorocarbon, which is what Wade's throwing, has a little bit of stretch. So he has a little more forgiveness in that fish. I've got to make sure that that really loads up before I set the hook. Holy, you got him. What a bite. I got the good one, too. Golly, what a bite. He came from so far. Golly, what a cool bite. 
That's that's awesome. Seen that was awesome. Fishing that shallow cover, getting that swim bait over it. Look at that. One. Now that'll show you how far one will come, man. That bait's going across the top, and that fish just. I mean, he's just sharking it like a shark. <laughs> he got all the way to it. That's awesome. You know, these swim bait bites like this in and around heavy cover, um, I mean, it's such a unique bite. You know, Clark's actually throwing sunline braid. I'm throwing sunline fluorocarbon, and it's just a choice in this type of situation. We've talked about it quite a bit. He's throwing a different line as me. He's got a little bit different rod set up than I do, and so Basically, each one of them is working really good for us. I like my braid, he likes his fluorocarbon. There's not one that's better than the other, it's just personal preference. With my rod, the braid's working perfect. With his rod, the fluorocarbon's working perfect. You just gotta figure out what works best in your situation. Mm. Ah, he's on that one tree. I couldn't do anything. I saw a belly a couple times, but I really don't know. Uh, getting that grass, he's gotta go to him. I mean, I have no idea what's going to come up out of there, if he's even still there. He's on that one stick in here. Oh, he's to the, he goes to the right. He's still there. I work the motor. He's still there. There he is right down there. There he is. <laughs> That's why you throw that sniper right there. Wrap around a bush, wrap around the grass. I mean, I haven't retied since we've been here. Probably need to. Famous last word after that. I just couldn't catch up with him, Clark. I mean, they're just, they're hitting with such speed and authority coming. I, I mean, coming out of those holes and just, they're gone. Hand to hand combat fishing at its finest. These are days you kind of dream about. No, they totally are. Just kind of dream about. Oh man! Oh, way that was awesome! Oh, Almighty! Holy cow! <laughs> That's red fishing that right is, there that for exactly, a blast. That is exactly what that was. Golly! <laughs> Holy cow. That was a good one. I had to take pictures. Man, that was fast. <laughs> I mean, he was cutting that, that cane like crazy. That's all I could do. I couldn't do anymore. <laughs> God almighty. That was great. That was great. That was a, I that, mean, when he bit, it was game on. Gosh, it just went so fast. I mean, it was just cutting that cane. Cartwheeling out across It there. was. <laughs> There's a reason they call it fishing and not catching. Each time you hit the water, you're not guaranteed to get a bite. Every trip is unique, and we as anglers have to pay close attention to every detail on any given day. So take the tips from today's show, apply them on your next outing, and have a ton of fun setting the hook on plenty of fish. I like to catch one of the last cast anyway. <laughs> Make you feel good. Now, if he gets off, we'll stay another we'll hour. We'll stay another hour until you catch one? Yeah. Donkey. Mm-hmm. Just right. Thanks for watching this episode of The Fisherman's Handbook. This has been a Caraco TV production. I got my power pole down. So still in the wind and the waves Could even be a hurricane I got my power pole down You know, when I look at the tournaments I've won, probably Four or five of the boats that I've won have been on a tube, but I had completely gotten away from flipping a tube because nobody, nobody made one soft enough. Big Bite has come with this new tour series of baits. The thing that's probably the most unique is when you look at that bait, the salt just rolls out of it. And to me, that is the reason a fish bites a tube and hangs on to it. This isn't one of those, let's go out and catch some smallmouth tube. This is a let's get it done tube.
The Little John family expands with new rattling versions of the Little John 50 and Little John 50 MD. Both of these baits are proven fish catchers that will now be available in rattling versions for stained and muddy water. They feature the same great action and diving depths as the original 50 and MD sizes.